from the ambassador, and then move into questions. Thank you so much for being here. Um, we have uh, quite a turnout here, so we've got 18 different members of the media. I will go over the different outlets. We've got AG, awesome. Top FM, Classic FM, CGTN, Juba News, BBC World Service, Voice of America, Juba Echo, Xinhua News, um, City Review, The Mail, CRM, Number One Citizen, iRadio, and Radio Live. <coughs> now, without further ado, I will do it. Thank you very much, Charlotte. Uh, thank you, Marie. Uh, uh, good afternoon, colleagues of the Fourth Estate. Uh, it's always really a pleasure for me to come back to the Republic of South Sudan. It's not my first time here, and it's always nice to come back home uh, in Juba. Now, uh, <clears throat> the, the visit of the Special Envoy, as you will have been informed by our colleagues here. Um, this visit is uh, in basically in reaction and in solidarity with the Republic of South Sudan uh, following the impact, the massive impact that this country continues to experience as a result of the conflict in Sudan. Now the conflict in Sudan has impacted many countries and neighboring Sudan, and in particular, uh, the Republic of South Sudan, being one of the main countries affected by uh, the displacement that we continue to see as a result of the war raging in Sudan. Now already, uh, as Special Envoy of the High Commissioner in this region, uh, we, we already have over 2.2 South Sudanese that we continue to cater for outside South Sudan in the neighboring countries as refugees, as you will know, who are patiently waiting uh, to come back home and participate in the overall reconstruction of this country. But this country also continues to experience a large number of internally displaced population, which can account for over 2.2. 3 million of the internally displaced South Sudanese for one reason or the other, be it internal conflicts or the vagaries of climate change, be it drought or floods. But of course, this country is uh, making steady progress politically, steady progress, and uh, because of the peace processes that were signed a few years ago, since 2018, we also saw the return of nearly over 600,000 South Sudanese voluntarily themselves uh, coming back to the country uh, to come back home. However, the conflict in Sudan continues to impact here. And we have daily arrival of over 2,000 Sudanese who come, South Sudanese and the Sudanese or other nationalities who continue to cross the border and come for safety and sanctuary here. Uh, since April, we have recorded uh, 160,000 South Sudanese who were in Sudan returning back. And the, con the numbers continue to grow. We also have uh, unique mixed populations coming into South Sudan, be it Sudanese coming to seek for safety here, but also third country nationals, uh, Ethiopians, uh, maybe Eritreans, uh, other third country uh, nationalities uh, who also uh, was having present in Sudan, who also, as a result of safety concerns, have crossed over. Therefore, I'm here to understand myself the magnitude and the impact of this, uh, the gravity of this situation uh, to the Republic of South Sudan. And for that matter, together with our representative, uh, country representative, and the partners of the Republic of South Sudan, we managed to, to visit a reception center in Malakal. 
uh, where what we saw really is quite devastating in terms of the situation of the people who have returned and the conditions they continue to live in, which is not acceptable as we saw it. But we would like to thank the government for its efforts in, in trying to address the challenges that con continue to face those returning population. I would also like to thank our partners. But appeal for more. There is a lot more that needs to be done to really support the conditions, to make the conditions of those who are returning much better than they are currently are living in. And they're coming into rank, and then onward transportation to Malakal and to the rest of the country where they uh, identify as original homes. All that requires massive and uh, intensive logistical arrangements and resources, and therefore I think uh, government is doing all its best, and we would like to acknowledge really the unique contribution of government, the leadership. We were down there with the Minister for Humanitarian Affairs, but the challenges of displacement in this country is such that it is the needs are massive, and I would like to appeal to the partners of South Sudan uh, for more support in terms of resources in order to confront the challenges that these populations continue to face. I would like to take this opportunity really to also acknowledge the leadership of the government in opening its borders to those who are fleeing conflict from Sudan. That, I think, should be the starting point. That the, the country, South Sudan, to accept that they can be able to welcome their brothers and sisters fleeing violence. It is a very, very significant step that must be acknowledged. And I would like to congratulate the government and on behalf of the High Commissioner to thank the President for the leadership uh, in opening the borders of the Republic of South Sudan for those who are seeking safety uh, here. Um, it's also important at this juncture to, to state that we have collaborated with the Republic of South Sudan together with the regional body, IGAD, over the last many years to develop a national durable solutions strategy to address the entire displacement question of the Republic of South Sudan in order to address the needs of all this population, including to create conditions favorable for those who wish to come back home, to come back and participate in the reconstruction of the country. And that plan has been one of the most consultative plans that we have developed in this region, together with the uh, other countries that neighbor in South Sudan. At the moment, the National Durable Solution Strategy is a very, at a very critical stage, and we hope that soon uh, the cabinet of this country will be able to have an opportunity to adapt it in order to allow uh, the mobilization of support that will be required to implement that strategy. As you will know, in any particular situation, you must have a plan. And the government national plan is very much reflected in this very consultative process which we have as UNHCR supported before and which we are actually willing to continue to support uh, the, the, the people and the country uh, in the long run. And most finally, I'd like uh, to announce and to let you know that this year we have the second Global Refugee Forum. As you might have known that through the Global Refugee Compact, uh, it's envisaged that every, after every few years uh, in Geneva we have a convention of the Refugee Forum, global, and we hope that that will be a forum in which we can utilize to market South Sudan uh, to create conditions that are favorable for all the populations that have been displaced uh, to live better lives and to showcase the pledges that the government has made uh, to achieve uh, those, those objectives, including uh, a peace-building pledge that uh, hopefully the, uh, the Republic of South Sudan can participate in a global conversation about peace-making and peace processes together with many other countries that uh, are emerging from war, like, uh, like the Republic of South Sudan. So I would like to, to, to once again thank you and uh, to really appreciate your presence here and your interest in this press conference. And to finally say that thank you to the, to the people of South Sudan for their hospitality, 
for your generosity and for your kind attention to all those who have been displaced, including the returning population, uh, back to the country. And I thank you very much.